Welcome everybody, my name is Alex. Today we are starting a brand new series where I test different charges that I bought over the years for my power delivery devices. A power delivery devices is something like the MacBook Pro, iPad, Nintendo Switch, a lot of power banks, a high-end Android smartphone. Now the first question would be why would I buy another charger if I already have one that came with the device? Well, you can have two reasons. Maybe you broke your charger, maybe you lost your charger, or maybe you simply have to have one charger that can charge all of your devices. And for example, a specific case for me is that I want to be able to charge my devices on the go. So that's why I also have some car chargers here. And I am very surprised that even these car chargers are powerful enough to power a MacBook Pro or even a gaming laptop. So, because this is the first video in the series, I will quickly show you what chargers I will be covering in this series. Because I don't know all the names of these devices, I will simply put them on the screen, but I will tell you what power they are and you will find link in the description. So, the first charger we are speaking about, it's a car charger that has a total output of maximum 60 watts and this is divided between two sockets. So if you're using only the USB-C you can get maximum 45 watts or at least this is what the producer is claiming so we will test that and if you use the USB you can get maximum 18 watts. They say that this USB-C is power delivery 3 compliant and uh, the normal USB is quick charge 3 compliant. In the second video I will be presenting this car charger. This car charger pretends to have maximum 112 watts output and uh, I think this is my favorite because the finish is so nice and actually from all the car chargers I use this fits the best in the car socket and when it fits it's really sturdy. So look out for this review. This claims to have power delivery maximum 90 watts on the USB Type-C connection and on the normal USB quick charge 18 watts. The third charger is this charger and uh, this one claims to have a maximum of 120 watts. This has two USB-A with uh, maximum 18 watts and a maximum 95 watt DC plug. This is a barrel plug, so uh, it's compatible with older laptops that don't have power delivery. But because of the power this has, I think it's very interesting. And actually we can convert this to a power delivery. Stick around for that review and I will show you how. Now we switch to the regular chargers that you will plug in in your power outlet and we will start with uh, this gun charger this uh, is a very small charger compared to the regular chargers and uh, this claims to have 65 watts total power this has two USB-C and one USB-A the next one on the list is this one this has two power delivery USB Type-C connections and this one claims to be 100 watts and you see this is quite compact for a 100 watt charger this is actually half the size of my razor blade stealth gaming laptop and is outputting the same power and this is also because it uses this latest technology called gun and the last charger on the list is also a 100 watt charger but you see this one has a lot of connections so this is very good in case you have multiple devices that you need to charge and you are tired of so many cables and so many chargers you can basically charge all of your devices in one place but be aware 100 watt is the total of this so of course if you have multiple devices in the power will be divided between the devices and I will try to see how the power is divided. So this was a big intro, but today I want only to cover this small car charger. 
This is actually the most affordable of the chargers I have here on the table and actually it can easily power up uh, a MacBook Pro 13 that normally uses 60 watts. You can get 45 watts out of this, so it's a bit slower than your wall plug, but still it does a good job. So before I start reviewing, I will quickly show you the page on Amazon. You can find the link below if you're looking for this. But I see that this is actually now only 20 euros. This is quite a good price. Unfortunately, the description here is in German, even if I have my Amazon set in English. But I think you can get the idea and uh, we can quickly look into what the manufacturer is claiming in the pictures. So here we will see the claims about the power this charger can deliver and it is 45 watt on the power delivery tree through the USB-C and the maximum of 18 watts through the normal USB and this is Qualcomm Quick Charge 3 compatible. It says here that it's compatible with a lot of devices and that's to be expected. They claim here a 35 minutes 80% charging, but this depends on your device. Because I have seen that some devices are able to draw more out of these chargers and some of devices don't draw so much. But I will show you the maximum we can draw out of every port. And they also claim an energy efficiency up to 87%. That's quite good that they claim this because we can also test this. And they also say that it has a light surrounding the device so you can easily see it in your car. I think this is quite a nice feature but maybe some of you will not like it because it will maybe be distracting when you're driving during the night. With most cars nowadays having ambient lighting and so on possibly this will not be so disturbing. So we've seen now what the manufacturer is claiming. Let's jump and test for ourselves to see what this can do. Now let's have a quick look at how this is constructed. The top is milled aluminium, I think. It feels very premium. It's very nice. And I assume this is to better dissipate the heat that this will produce. Because with so much power, I'm sure that this will get some heat. Now on the sides, we have very strong springs here that will help keep this in your car socket. So that's very good to see. And they even have here a flat head, probably to be able to have more contact because this will be using in the end 60 watts of power. Now the spring here is also strong, so that's good. Now maybe you are wondering, how would I test these devices? So for the testing, first I need a car socket and fortunately I have here this power bank. Uh, I already presented this in one of my previous video, but basically we have here on the back a car socket. This is exactly like the car socket on your car. So there is no difference there. You will see that this will work just fine for us. Now, the second point is we need a device to be able to see how much power we can draw. So I have here this device that is able of consuming up to 150 watts and I can adjust this very nicely and we can see here exactly uh, the time how much I use the device and the power that I was able to get from the device, the current, the voltage. So I think that's quite good. The only problem is that this device works mainly with the DC power plug. But for this, I have a very interesting cable that is able to convert power delivery, USB type C, to a DC plug. And as you can see here, this supports power delivery up to 100 watt. And this cable will be useful for all my testing. Now, to be able to test the efficiency, you need to see how much this is drawing and how much you get on the output. And you need to make the percentage out of that. For this, 
I will be using another power bank that I have and this power bank can show me the power that is consumed from the battery. So I will connect this charger from this battery and we will see here how much is charging and we will see here how much this battery is discharging. We will divide these two values and we will see the efficiency of this device. Now, the third test that is for me very important is to see how much this will heat up. Because this was my first worry when I started buying these powerful car chargers. How much it will heat up. So for this I will uh, leave the charger running for 10 minutes and then I will measure the temperatures. Of course we will measure uh, the, the temperature also in the beginning but that will not be very interesting. So this is still in the frame so that you can see where this sits and I will simply plug in the USB-C on this end because I want to test the USB-C first and let's see. So now this is connected to the 12 volt socket and we will connect here the DC plug. I will. Now the device is started and we can see here we have the 20 volts expected from a power delivery device. And I'm now turning the gain button to be able to get the maximum 45 watts out of this. And I am very lucky I was able to adjust this directly at 44 watts, but I will test the limits on this. So I will push to see how much we can get out of this. To see how much I can get from this, I want to go slower. So I will use the second dial on this device and uh, let's see what we get. Normally these devices are interrupting very shortly after the maximum power is reached. So you see here I have 48 watts, 50. I assume this is possible because in the end this has a total power of 60 watts, but some of it is reserved for the second port. But let's continue. We see here that it's uh, fluctuating now and I assume this is because we basically over the power limit of this. And yeah, as soon as I try to push over the 50, basically it dropped. But this means the manufacturer claim is actually reached because we were able to draw 45 watts. Now I want to test the USB port, but I want to test the USB port while I'm still stressing the USB-C port. So because of this, I plugged in a device that is charging from the USB-C and I will start testing the USB. Now I will use a normal cable that came with my quick charge Android phone and uh, just to let you know this battery draws the maximum um, here is 45 watts almost so I hope you can see now on the screen the small battery 44.75 watts so we can say that the USB-C port is already at its limit and now let's plug in the USB port I can measure here USB-C input but it will work only with 5 volts because it seems to be able to engage power delivery or quick charge you will have to have another special device that I don't own but let's see with 5 volts how much power we can get over the regular USB
So again, this is claimed to be 18 watts. We are getting close. We can easily draw 16 watts here and 44 watts on the USB-C port. And it dropped. That means that actually we are very close to this 18 watts. And what I like is that uh, it quickly started again as soon as I dropped the dial. So um, yeah, this is good in case your device is accidentally disconnected, it will start to charge immediately. Because there are some other devices that have some kind of safety and um, if you draw more than the power uh, allowed, it will not restart itself, you would have to plug it out and plug it back in. Now, I will reset the timer on this and I will leave it for 10 minutes. But before starting uh, to measure everything, I said that I will do a temperature test so that we can see um, how much hotter it gets compared to the first minutes of use. So let me focus here on my temperature gun. Okay. So it seems that uh, the device is already at uh, 35 degrees Celsius. Let's see how hot this will get in 10 minutes. I assume in 10 minutes it will get to uh, the maximum temperature easily. So the temperature I have here is 48 degrees Celsius or 117 degrees Fahrenheit. This is a lot and you can get burned from this temperature. So pay attention when you are using this kind of chargers. And let's see in the next episodes how much hotter will the other ones get. Because those are almost double the power of this one. I'm quite curious to see how those devices will handle the heat. For the efficiency test, I plug the charger in my other battery where I can see a power output reading and uh, let's see how we can work with that. Unfortunately, this will not be the efficiency at 60 watts because I can only measure one thing at a time. But let's see what we can calculate from these devices that I have here. I will first adjust this at the maximum 45 watts so it's almost 47 watts and it's hovering around that value. Yeah, 47.5, I would say it's the average. 47.5 and we will divide this by 51 we have now here. Yeah, so the result is actually 0 0.93. This means that the claimed efficiency from the manufacturer, it's actually valid. Possibly when you will have also plugged in the normal USB, the power efficiency will decrease a bit, but still, I think this is quite good. It's even better compared to what they claimed, so I always like when I have nice surprises, because on these devices, you are always on the limit with whatever the manufacturer claims, because they want to sell the product as much as possible, so they will always claim their limits. Now, I don't advise that you would buy cheaper car chargers because these are able to break your fuse and uh, yeah, that's not a nice thing to have, right? If you like this content, don't forget to subscribe and I'm very curious if you have other tests in mind that I could do on this kind of devices. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Till next time, have a good one.